Hello everyone. So again, I'm back uh, with another video. So in this video, I'm going to discuss uh, another problem that is problem number seven. So it was a very nice problem and uh, problem number seven from uh, ISI 2023 UGB. So yeah, it was really a nice problem. And uh, for the first part, it was fine. You could uh, uh, like guess that we have to apply this through induction. Uh, uh, so inducting on N, but uh, the second part was uh, something challenging. So uh, again, uh, without uh, wasting time, so let's discuss. And again, if you are finding the solutions helpful, so please don't forget to share it among uh, your friends. And uh, also please don't forget to like. Okay, so, okay, let's go to the problem. Uh, here. So here's the problem, uh, the seventh one, that is for n greater than equals to one, be an integer, prove that x to the power n plus y to the power n plus z to the power n can be uh, written as a polynomial with integer coefficients in the variables alpha, beta, and gamma, where alpha is given to be capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z, and you can see beta and uh, gamma as well. And uh, so here, uh, I mean, the naturally the idea comes that we have to go through induction, okay? Part B, again, G of N is defined and where all these X, Y, Z and capital A, B, C are given to be real numbers. And also it's given that uh, A plus B plus C is a multiple of pi, integral multiple of pi. So using A or otherwise, we have to show that if G1 is equal to G2 is equal to zero, then gn is equal to zero for all integers n, okay? So yes, uh, let's start solving the problem. So as I said, for the first part, I'll be inducting on n. So this is UGB 2023. This is problem number seven. So the first part, there are two parts, part A. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll prove the result. So we will prove the result by induction on the variable n, okay? So now you can very well see that if n is equals to one, it's very trivial then x plus y plus capital Z is equals to alpha. Again, if n is equals to two, then x squared plus y squared plus z squared is nothing but, I mean, these are the very basic things you know already. And so this can be written as alpha square minus two times beta. Again, similarly, if uh, n is three, you can calculate and see. So I'm not showing the calculation. So uh, because these are just algebraic expressions that you have learned in your basic school level. plus three gamma. Okay, so alpha cube minus three alpha beta plus three gamma. Now the inducting part. Okay, so we'll assume that for every k belonging to one dot dot till n for n greater than or equals to three, there exists a polynomial with integer coefficients pk in three variables such that
x to the power k plus y to the power k plus capital Z to the power k is nothing but alpha to the power k plus okay so uh, how is the idea coming so here as you can see like we did it for three variables so we are getting uh, some alpha uh, to the power that n and then some expression so that's why the idea came from this so this was also like the induction part was also not easy if you couldn't uh, get this so uh, alpha to the power k plus p k alpha beta gamma okay so now let's go to the next part so then alpha to the power n plus 1 becomes alpha to the power n times alpha and we know that this is nothing but x to the power n plus y to the power n plus z to the power n minus pn. So I'm just applying the inductive step. So alpha, beta, gamma, the polynomial and uh, times alpha, which is nothing but capital X plus capital Y plus capital Z. Okay, so this is nothing but capital X to the power n plus 1. So here uh, it's just calculations, y to the power 1, z to the power n plus 1, x to the power n y plus x to the power n z plus x y to the power n plus y to the power n z plus x z to the power n plus y z to the power n. I hope I have uh, multiplied everything correctly. So minus alpha pn alpha beta gamma. And this is again equals to x to the power n plus 1 plus y to the power n plus 1 plus z to the power n plus 1 plus xy x to the power n minus 1 plus y to the power n minus 1 plus x z x to the power n minus 1 plus z to the power n minus 1 plus y z y to the power n minus 1 plus z to the power n minus 1 minus alpha p n alpha beta gamma okay so again uh, this is equal to x to the power n plus 1 plus y to the power n plus 1 plus z to the power n plus 1 plus x y plus y z plus uh, z x or x z times x to the power n minus 1 plus y to the power n minus 1 plus z to the power n minus 1 minus x y z x to the power n minus 2 plus y to the power n minus 2 plus z to the power n minus 2 minus alpha p to the power alpha beta gamma and that is finally becoming equal to x to the power n plus 1 plus y to the power n plus 1 plus z to the power n plus 1 plus beta alpha to the power n, n minus 1 plus p to the power n minus 1 alpha beta gamma minus gamma alpha to the power n minus 2 plus p to the power n minus 2. Uh, so just uh, the inductive steps that I am using, okay? So alpha, because I'm using strong induction here. So minus alpha pn alpha beta gamma. And thus, hence, we get 
x to the power n plus 1 plus y to the power n plus 1 plus z to the power n plus 1 is equals to alpha to the power n plus 1 minus beta alpha to the power n minus 1 minus beta p n minus 1 alpha beta gamma plus gamma alpha to the power n minus 2 plus gamma p n minus 2 alpha beta gamma plus alpha p n alpha beta gamma. So hence uh, we have been able to prove that x to the power n plus y to the power n plus z to the power n can be expressed as a polynomial in, in alpha beta gamma with integer coefficients. Okay. And so uh, the first part is proved. Okay. So now uh, let's, uh, so for all n greater than or equal to 1, we have been able to prove by induction. I'm not writing down the final step. You know what to write down in the final step of induction. So, uh, okay. So now uh, let's go to part B. So part B was again another challenging part. So uh, according to part A, for all n, we are seeing that uh, like uh, from part A, for all n greater than equals to 1, there exists a polynomial, polynomial qn in three variables. such that x to the power n plus y to the power n plus z to the power n is equals to qn x plus y plus z, which is alpha basically x y plus y z plus z x and x y z. So now uh, moreover, what we have is Q1, as you can see that Q, sorry, Q1 of alpha, beta, gamma is nothing but alpha. Q of 2 is not alpha, beta, gamma is alpha square minus 2 beta. Okay, so now uh, this alpha, beta, gamma is in our hand. So we will be defining alpha, beta, and gamma. So define alpha as x e to the power i a plus y e to the power so this is small x small y so e to the power i b and small z e to the power i capital c and beta as x y e to the power i a plus b plus y z so all x, y, z are small and a, b, c are caps uh, in caps and x, z, e to the power i, a plus c and gamma, which is x, y, z, e to the power i, a plus b plus c. Okay. So now we are getting a nice form uh, with respect to our polynomial. So uh, the G, so in the problem, if we, sorry, if we go back to the problem. So here we have this GN. So we'll be now representing GN in terms of QN. So then we are getting, so going to the next page. So then, Gn is becoming x to the power n e to the power i n a minus e to the power minus i n a and uh, plus y to the power n e to the power i n b minus e to the power i n b plus z to the power n 
uh, e to the power i n c. So all these x, y, z are in small uh, letters, okay? And minus e to the power negative i n c. And all those a, b, c are capital. So divided by 2i. And which gives us that this is nothing but becoming q n alpha beta gamma minus q n alpha bar beta bar gamma bar divided by 2i. Now it's given that uh, g1, considering g1 is equal to 0 and g2 is equal to 0, we will have to show that gn is 0 for all n. So now considering that g1 is equal to 0, so it will follow that basically we will be getting here. Uh, so this is uh, q1, which is alpha minus alpha bar, uh, which will be equal to 0 and which, uh, so g1 equals 0 implies alpha is equals to alpha bar. Okay. And similarly, g2 equals 0 implies just use the definition of q2 here, like not the definition, what was q2 actually. So we will be getting uh, here that is would imply that alpha square minus or basically like, let me write it down q2 of alpha beta gamma is equals to q2 of alpha bar beta bar gamma bar which implies that alpha square minus 2 beta is equals to alpha bar square minus 2 beta bar and thus we are getting that is beta uh, is equal to beta bar. Okay, so Yes, because uh, alpha is equals to alpha bar. And so this is canceling out. And so we are getting the result. Okay. So now final part, uh, gamma. So now we, one thing we haven't used is that uh, since a plus b plus c is given to be an integral multiple of pi. So let it be m times pi. So then we have gamma, which is x, y, z, e to the power i, m, y which is x y z e to the power i m pi minus 2 i m pi and uh, that is coming out to be x y z e to the power minus i m pi and that is equals to gamma bar and now uh, we are getting alpha equals alpha bar, beta equals beta bar, and uh, gamma equals gamma bar. And from there, it follows that basically, so this part will become, uh, those two polynomials would become basically equal. And so that implies gn is equals to zero for all n greater than equals to one. Okay, so yes, uh, I mean, this problem, like the second part was challenging, even the first part, not a very smooth uh, induction process. So uh, there are a lot of calculations where you can go wrong. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I think uh, I've been able to uh, provide some value by solving this question. So uh, again, if you liked the solution, don't forget to put a like this video and uh, please do share it among the others fellow uh, students who have given the exam or are preparing for so yeah so uh, with this problem we uh, have posted uh, six problems out of the eight problems the last two problems are left which i'll also be posting so stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching and keep watching and keep learning and uh, see you in the next one